So when I received um, this Master Taylor certificate in 1991 from the German Minister of Labor, I was incredibly proud and I was so clear that I have to open a tailor shop and become famous. Um, so of course, at that time, I was at the same time um, very curious about this concept of lifelong learning and technology. So I thought, let's, let's put this tailor shop for a while on hold, and honestly speaking, I didn't make it until today. But uh, I, I moved to other directions. So I was always intrigued by this, this concept of learning something from others. And so I was always searching for uh, like organizations, companies, environments, where I could observe um, knowledge from others and try to become a better me. So, um, and then, and then, of course, you move on during your career. And then in 2015, I, um, I became responsible for 4,000 people in, in Izmir, in, uh, in this factory. Now, if you want to physically understand complexity, then you surround yourself with 4,000 4, people, which is like six times the audience today. So if you want to really feel small, then you, you, do, you should do that. Um, so I felt th this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to actually create something new, not only uh, technically, which was our approach towards digital uh, for, um, industry 4.0 and uh, so-called smart factory concepts, but also to create a space of openness, to create a space of curiosity, to ignite the fire in the people to, uh, and, be not cur and be curious about the future and not concerned. So that was something that I started with this concept and of course what happened is um, I faced reality. We had lots and lots of hierarchy levels there. We had lots of departments. Everyone was of course caring uh, primarily about themselves. They did work quite well, but for this kind of concept of openness, it didn't work. So we, we asked ourselves as an organization, how can we ease the life um, and how can we ease the organization? And so think about your, say, a textile engineer and you have something and you, you create uh, a new concept or a new machine and you do this for month and month and then you go live and then you feel, oh, nothing, no one likes it, it's unused, it's useless or people don't understand it. So we thought about this cross-departmental concept, about doing things more commonly, putting everyone on one table, like mechanical engineers, tailors, um, concept designers, and, and, and users, of course, um, and IT people, everyone on one. So, so that turned out to be a good concept and was way faster, uh, and we could, we could uh, move way faster towards digitalization uh, than we thought. Um, so with this organizational change and with all these uh, kinds of flat hierarchies, um, we were thinking about creating flat information flow. Uh, because if everything is flat in terms of hierarchy, then you can um, display and, and create information uh, quite vividly and you can just, and everyone can work with this. So we were thinking about uh, making information transparent and the first thing that we uh, introduced were these kind of screens that you see on this picture. Now, um, think about the, the apparel industry. Apparel industry is not so tech-savvy. It's typically a very uh, traditional industry. So when we first installed the first screens, there were operators saying, why are you not replacing my 10-year-old machine? I mean, I'm asking the mechanic every week to repair something, and you, make, you build these fancy TV screens there. And uh, so the people didn't uh, understand the concept of it. And we said, wait, wait for a while, it's coming. Uh, you will see that it's also beneficial for you um, in, the, in the next month to come. So these were the first uh, uh, introductions of technology, making information transparent, not talking about the past and about whatever happened, talking about what's actually going on right now. And then, and then there was a tipping point on this journey with these operators, which was the introduction of these tablet PC, PCs, which we put for everyone, we put next to their machines. And um, this is not an advertisement campaign, what you see here is. There were really women literally putting roses on, uh, on the holders of these, um, these tablet PCs because for the first time ever, they could see immediately what they wanted. They didn't have to ask um, supervisors about, uh, about information or go to the HR to ask for something. They could just, t with, within a, um, a fraction of a second, they could get all the information needed and they really embraced this, they really liked this. 
Um, and by the way, if you see the second picture, you see this small, this small um, device with all the, the, um, the touch points, and that was the former one. So everyone had to put like 16 numbers inside, and it was really a, a, a terrible way of entering data. So it was really helpful for them um, to, to have a device which was practically the same like their smartphones. And that was also something that we, um, that we were thinking about. How can we introduce technology in a way that it's not scaring, that it's not um, concerning people, that is something easy to understand. Not, I mean, you don't read a manual for WhatsApp. You just download the app and you just use it. And the same idea we had here, and that um, remained um, a, a very important topic um, until today. So uh, talking, about, talking about technology, we, we were really um, into it and we were flirting with a lot of different technologies. And one thing that we liked very much was, um, uh, which comes pretty much from also science fiction videos, is about talking to devices. Uh, now everyone today knows there are certain uh, companies out there and <clears throat> offer devices where you can talk to. And we did here the same. We analyzed the needs of the supervisors on the shop floor and we're thinking about how, how much do they have to type every day or every week into this PC. Why not create a kind of ADA, which is called Active Digital Assistant, where you just ask what is my current performance, who is absent today, who is ill, um, who, what is, what, who are the missing pieces that I have to care about and such. And what you see on the right side is actually the, the chatbot that we created. So these people, hey, they just talk to um, technology nowadays, and this is, there's not much to learn. It's the easiness that we believe that makes technology useful. And um, we are on a way which, uh, which we believe which is going towards this, is going towards a kind of invisible tech. We call it the, the art of sophistication. Someone says it's the no user interface interface. Uh, we talk to the room, we talk to a computer, we talk to a sewing machine, we talk to each other, and there's no difference anymore. So, so we believe that technology is coming ever closer to us, also on the shop floor in the production, but at the same time is also getting ever more invisible. So we can reconcentrate on the people again, which I believe is a very nice concept. Um, so, so we are very much working on this and we always try to, to, um, to, to build technology that is, uh, is convincing for the people. Now, with all this, we create a lot of data. We create millions of data points and we have lots of interactions. And we were thinking about this as a kind of digital twin concept. Like pretty much everyone here has a, has a kind of Facebook, LinkedIn or whatever account. So physically you are here, digitally you are also there somewhere in the space. And we created the same idea here and we, uh, we think about artificial intelligence to to actually process this data, this information. Now, one thing is that, of course, you can improve the production with this. You can improve uh, the processes and, and the, the flow. But there's also something other, there's something other very interesting, uh, which is understanding the, the 4,000 people that work there. So by, by understanding their data that they, in, that they put inside the systems, every day we learn more of these people. And what we figured out is that we can create dedicated trainings for these people, which uh, before were, were done more randomly. We, we would say, okay, everyone gets a training for a, a certain purpose, and now we can personalize everything for everyone perfectly. So we can concentrate with technology again more on the people. And sometimes we say we are going to become a huge tailor shop because we are going to have very, very um, expert people with, with the help of technology and they will not even um, recognize this so much because this happens in, um, in a kind of second area, which is this digital twin concept. And, um, and that leads me to, to this quote of, of Peter Diamandis, who is, um, who is saying that the human intelligence is actually the, the competitive advantage in the future. And I strongly believe this because technology will be something that you can buy off the shelf. So that doesn't change the way how we interact. But it's 
pretty much the way how we work with this technology, the smartness of the people that will be the, the driver for the success, be it companies or be it even countries. And that is an interesting thing if you start rethinking technology and, 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 and think about concentrating on the people again and not so much on the fancy devices. So, so this is what, uh, what we really uh, put at, at first in our, on our journey. And to make people think and to empower people, um, there is, there, you need certain space. Um, not only you need uh, time, so you cannot say, ah, you know, I'm going to be innovative next Friday from 2 to 3 o'clock. That's not going to work, never. There's sometimes this, this idea of, yeah, 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 let's be, let's be innovative and let's create this one hour per week and then we are innovative. Who, who of you is innovative on time? That's probably a kind of weird concept. So, so we are thinking about maybe we should create a space, we should, we should create a room and tools um, where, we can, where we can send the people to so that they literally leave the corporate organization and, and have space to dream for a while and to play for a while. Um, and we call this concept Innovation Excellence Center. And it's, it's very well perceived by the people, and it, cr it, it, it changes the mindset of people. They come back with solutions, they come back with new ideas, and they come back with something which, which I would call accountability, which is something they, they see, or okay, this is not about an organization anymore, it's about me contributing to the success of this organization. And um, what you are seeing here, is actually for me something very magic because this started uh, like, like six months ago. We started to empower the people of changing the layouts. Now, now that's something that is really um, not usual, I can tell you. Um, uh, this, is, this is the women's section, the, 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 the area where we produce the women's. Thanks to all the women here in the room, we have a, a high variety of products that we all have to produce. And so sometimes in the morning we produce blazers, sometimes in the afternoon we produ produce dresses or blouses or whatsoever. So you need different machines, you need different layouts. And, and these, people, th these operators, they do this by themselves. Normally this is done by engineers and by mechanics and such. But they, they understand the concept, they understand everything, their role in this concept, and they do this by themselves. For me this is magic. I tell you, in the beginning it took them one hour, now they t it takes like eight minutes. They change all the concepts, clean the machines, do everything. I, I, I could not think about this three years ago, but th something changed in the minds of these people. And this is a very um, physical um, a proof of, of that concept. So, hep um, beraber in Turkish means together. And that is a concept that, we always, that I always emphasize on, that doing things together is, um, is very important and thinking together and acting together as well. We made a, we made a nice ad, um, a campaign here because we have the 20th anniversary of this factory and we invited 300 operators to actually cross-departmental um, uh, work together and make these, these kind of pictures. I love, I love these pictures because when you look into these faces you see their dedication and you see that it is actually true. It's not something artificial. These are not models uh, hired for these kind of photo shootings. It, real people really thinking about, for example, this, um, this Turkish expression is together we are artisans. So together we do something special with our hands. And um, I love this very much and this brings me uh, pretty much to my last slide and my last statement. There are lots and lots of dystopian stories about the future and there are lots of um, stories what's going wrong and what will be complicated and everyone will be replaced by robots and computers. I'm not so sure if this is really something that we should buy and then that we should just accept. I believe if we create spaces and, and if we train people and make them smarter and create smart spaces and put the future into our hands, uh, and let people grow and shine, then we create the future that we want, which is the possible future, and I love this concept. Thank you very much.